as a youth reading Plato. I wanted to be a great writer, I suppose like Plato. And, uh, well incidentally, the Jesus story has its roots in the ancient wisdom, as I've said in other recordings. And that was translated to us by people like Socrates and written down by... Actually, I was thinking when I said Socrates, I was thinking of um, Pythagoras. But written down as Socrates by Plato. But don't take it as history, it's, it's historicity by now. The point is the thoughts come to you. And I as a youth studying Plato wanted to be a great writer. But I had nothing to write. I thought. And I was wrong. It made no difference. I decided I was going to write anyway. <laughs> you could say the stupidity or the courage or the, the greatness of the child. They set off to do the impossible. And you think, oh my goodness, he's walking along the top of that wall. Get him down before he hurts himself. <laughs> and so I started to write and I looked at what I'd written and it really wasn't very much. <laughs> I thought, I don't seem to be much good at this. By the time I was with my first wife, who was a good Baptist girl, you understand. Very proper. I had something to write. Because I was launched on the godly path, awareness of God. So I thought, I'd better write as I go, the godly life. And I did. I mean, I, I'm not sure, I haven't looked at it for years, but something like 400 sides of um, A4 typed. Well, written originally. The first half was written, I'm not sure whether I managed to type it all up. I think I did, yeah. But I've got the handwritten somewhere, and I probably got in the handwritten stuff that wasn't that I didn't manage to type up. And when I say type, I mean type. I didn't have a computer. And, uh, well, anyway, a few hundred pages at least, I think, yeah. I've got a copy of it somewhere, several. And a, a four side for each, each writing. I might do three or four writings on a day, but they were meant to be complete in themselves. In other words, I set myself a limit. It has to be within this target. I have a limit now, in a sense. It has to be basically It can't be over an hour, it's just too much over an hour, that's absurd. Ideally less than, less than 40 minutes anyway. And if it's three or four minutes, that can be good just in itself. Better in fact. Very often it's just 10 minutes, you know, whatever. The length was important because we're children and talking to children. Our attention span is, it's not that great. A good teacher doesn't teach too much. If he can possibly help it, he gets carried away, of course. And the kids lead him to get back carried away because 
what he's talking about is far more interesting than the lesson he thought he was going to give today. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want that. They want lie. Kids want lie. Tell us about what it was like when you were at school. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> and he's away. And they're happy. They're in story time. And it might be history. It might be historicity. Doesn't matter really. It looks like story time. That's what matters. Stories are of the greatest importance to children. Don't ever dismiss your scripture as just story, make believe. It's the greatest make believe that God gives to us to bless us. When he gives us story time at night. And the stories are limited because we get tired. And it says, now, that's the end of the story. They live happily ever and ever, ever after. Now, tuck you up and go to bye byes. Night night, God bless. Where was I? Oh. Well, I'll tell you the point of this recording, as far as I know. <laughs> you should record. Record what God's doing in your life. You've got my example. When you've done two or three thousand recordings, you get quite good at it. Well, at least <laughs> from your own satisfaction point of view. <laughs> But you see, he does a greater thing in you than through you. You're doing it to bless others. Well, that's lovely. That's just perfect. And so he flows through you. He's willing to talk through you, with you and through you, and encourage you, and hold you up when you would have made mistakes, and carry you over, and puts the mistakes you make right. He rubs it out and changes it without you knowing so that your history becomes history, historicity, and your historicity story and legend, an ancient tale that enshrines the wisdom that you received from God in your life, recorded to bless others and help them eternally. So when you leave this world, you've left as much help as you can to those that follow. Isn't that just lovely? It's not perfect. May God grant they don't worship it. But it is purpose to be a help. And by the grace of God, it will bless you. Bless you, and you are blessed, thanks to Dad, your heavenly Dad who loves you. That's the Jesus message. The rest is as nothing by comparison. The value is realizing that the God of all creation, your God, is your dad, your heavenly loving dad, who in particular loves you. That's the Jesus message. Read John's Gospel, and you'll find I'm right. <laughs> I do like being right. 